I did nothing wrong. But what? Was hanging out with somebody that I didn't even hang out with? An undercover sting operation in Florida nabbed 20 men allegedly planning to meet up with children for sex. Our hope is here that uh, these charges will will hit them very hard and they will be out of our society for quite quite a few years and not out here preying on these children. Lieutenant Paul Bloom with the Marion County Sheriff's Office tells Long Crime Network the suspects range in age from 22 to 79 years old. What we do is bring all of our detectives in and they will usually start uh, just getting online, different chat uh, rooms. And I've had a lot of people ask me, what, what chat rooms are they using? I want to protect my kids. Well, if you just go to the to the app store and type in dating chat, you will scroll and you will scroll and you will scroll because there's endless numbers of them. So we get on some of the main ones and uh, just start putting ourselves out there. And they're posing as this in this operation, 14 and 15 year old children and uh, both boys and girls. And when uh, these people reach out to them, we always the detectives will always make it clear look, I am 14 years old or I'm 15 years old. Is that a problem? And invariably these people are like, yeah, no, it's no problem. You know, we'll, uh, we can meet up, we can talk, we can, and, and they start sending explicit pictures to what they think is a child. And one of the sad parts there is, is, is that it's, this has taken place a lot of it, 3.30 in the afternoon, four o'clock in the afternoon, when kids may be home and parents away at work or even late after hours when parents have gone to bed and they're trying to target their audience, so to speak. Bloom says what's most disturbing may be that officers posing as children don't reach out to any suspects. Instead, the suspects reach out to them, believing them to be teenagers. We just join in these chat rooms and we have uh, obviously some some fake profile photos of ourselves. And, um, and when you look at these photos, you go, OK, that's probably not an 18 year old. So. Um, we don't, we don't go looking for them. We just get on in these rooms and these predators will come looking for you. They're, they are the ones that are hunting, that are fishing for these children. And they find us, they will start to say, hey, hey, you look cute, what's your name? Hey, um, and just start some sort little conversation with them. And then that leads us into talking uh, more with them. And very, very quickly, and I'll tell you these, these, the scripts from some of these, these arrest reports would just turn your stomach the more than a dozen arrests came as part of the so-called MAP Mirage sting operation. MAP standing for Minor Attracted Persons. Bloom says it's the third year of the operation where the Marion County Sheriff's Office pairs with state and federal law enforcement agencies. Each time just gets a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. And one of the statistics that I put out there is when we did this in 2021, we had 30 people that were online chatting and, and trying to meet up with, with uh, juveniles. And we arrested some of those. The following year, we had that number went way up, up to 89 people last year. Uh, this year, there was over 100 people that they were chatting with and that were trying to meet, meet up children for sex. Bloom says the suspects chat with who they believe are children and often send pornographic images. After that, some agree to meet up. The scary thing, I think, is that for any parent is that yes, these people will travel uh, hours to come find your child if they're if they're out there and, and they're on these chat rooms and meeting these people a lot of them that just decided you know yeah i'll come meet you at a convenience store or at the mall and um and they're willing to travel to meet this child to take them somewhere and and hopefully have sex with a with a 14 or 15 year old so uh some of them were had not gotten to that point where they were going to come travel to meet a child but they were still willing to send explicit pictures the whole time asking for those same pictures back from the child and trying to promote uh, child pornography. So uh, their charges still, still very steep charges they're facing as well, even though they didn't travel. The suspects face charges of transmitting harmful material to a minor, traveling to meet a minor, or various child abuse charges. Bloom says each of the 20 men arrested face multiple charges. 10 of the suspects are still in custody in the Marion County Jail, while the other 10 have since been released on bond. Disturbingly, Bloom says some of the suspects are repeat offenders. A lot of, a lot of law enforcement officers will tell you the same thing, that it's, it's frustrating. You, you do re-arrest some of the same people, the same offenders. Other suspects attempted to meet up with multiple children at once. One person we had, uh, Mr. Lewis, he was uh, texting one of our detectives unknowingly, thought he was talking to a child started a second conversation, 
which with a different child, which was also happened to be one of our detectives, started a third and then a fourth conversation. And lucky for us, all four of those conversations were with our detectives. Um, so I said his his luck, he did not even be buying lottery tickets. His luck had run out. <laughs> so um, just how many people they're trying at one time to talk to is just surprising. Once arrested, Bloom says suspects have a wide variety of reactions, though many go into denial. They did nothing wrong. But what? Was hanging out with somebody that I didn't even hang out with? Parents especially speak up, stand up, and you're standing up for your kids. You're speaking up for your kids. And let your elected officials know, listen, this is very serious to us. Uh, your state legislators, all the way down to your, your county judges, let, letting them know how, how concerned you are that this is happening. These people are allowed to be back out in society, not learning, not changing, but committing the same egregious offenses. Experts say the best way to keep your kids safe is to keep an open dialogue about difficult conversations. They also say it's important to know who they're chatting with and on what social media platforms. Reporting for Long Crime Network, I'm Sierra Gillespie.